Charles, and let's speak with Baroness Sally Greengross, former Director General at the charity Age Concern, and Dr. Bharat Pankanier, who's Senior Clinical Lecturer at the University of Exeter's Medical School and Infectious Disease Management Expert. Uh, Dr. Pankanier, firstly, I mean, is that a reasonable ask? 15 million people to stay indoors for half a year. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, of course not. What the advice should be is how to keep safe because we cannot imprison so many people who are otherwise fit and healthy and uh, able. What, what is required is how do you carry on from here for the next 18 months or so? And that should include simple, basic health protection advice for all these vulnerable people. And it is possible to do so without being confined to barracks, so to say. How would that happen? Because, of course, the last lockdown was was very stringent. It was very insistent that this that this meant no contact with people. You might be able to wave at your grandkids through a plate glass window, but that was about it. Yes, so we, we, we have a big failure. The failure of public health messaging and the fundamentals of infection control and understanding what it means. So what you do is this. The infection is spread from humans to humans. And you sort of say, right, if you mingle with too many humans, you will get infected. If you go to crowded places, crowded buses, crowded restaurants, you will get infected. On the other hand, if you go for long walks in the country, you are perfectly safe. If you keep to your small connection of humans, your family, friends, and you keep it tight, the likelihood of you getting infected is very low. So you operate in that scheme of a safe scheme, be it be indoors or outdoors. And it is basic fundamental education and encouragement. I don't want people to be confined to their homes. It's not right. Baroness Greengrass, I mean, you, you've worked in this area uh, a lot. You know about the vulnerabilities and the difficulties. I mean, even looking at the amount of people in the first lockdown, nearly three million being asked to shield. What sort of toll do you think that's taken already? I think the doctor who's just spoken is perfectly right. We can't impose something like a life sentence on millions of people. We just can't do it. Life has to have hope, has to be worth living. And if you think you haven't got very long to live, it's even more important that people have access to the few people they really care about and love. That's usually their immediate family if they have one. So we have to strike a balance and we have to look after people by saying these are the safety measures which the doctor has just uh, spoken about, please keep to them because your safety is terribly important to us and to the National Health Service and so on. But we're all human beings. You can't incarcerate people at the end of their lives when life has to have some value. Otherwise, it's not worth living. Mm. And not to put too fine a point on it, loneliness can kill. Loneliness can kill. Dr. Pancarnier, I mean, are there other options? Are you aware that governments could look at or clinicians could explore, scientists could mull over? That would, I mean, you talked about, you know, not unreasonably, that it doesn't mean you've got to stay indoors all the time, you can go for a walk. But personal contact is what some people want. It's that sense of isolation. You know, you can be lonely in a crowd, as we know. You can certainly be lonely if all you can do is go for a walk and not see your family. Look, I think, you know, what is sort of almost very depressing is the science is pretty easy to follow, but we've gone about making it up and making it very complicated. I feel very sorry that laws such as you are confined to your home during the initial lockdown were brought in and people took that literally. And I, who thinks from first principles, was saying, well, what's wrong with going for a walk? What's wrong with mingling with another person who we know is not mingling with other people. In other words, their circle of friends is limited. And it is that back to fundamental infection control and basics, understanding how the virus spreads and then taking countermeasures will allow us to carry on with our lives. Because I, I promise you, this virus is endemic. It's not going away in six months. It will be here for many months. It is better to prepare now and get our people used to it. You know, for example, if you were to just wear a good, nice, snug fitting mask and insist, insist that everybody else does too, you will drastically reduce your infection numbers. And yet 
And yet we don't get this. We say wear a mask, but nobody is getting really strict about it. So you're, you're absolutely pro the mask as, as a part of the uh, way of yes. solving it, because you will be aware there's a, a lot of contention and um, divide in the room on, on the wearing of the mask, even in the medical world. Well, look, um, let, let me share with you something. Initially, we started off with this is droplet spread, heavy spread. And if I'm standing next to you, uh, I may infect you. Fine. But now that the science has moved on, we learn and we are now aware that there is an aerosol element to spread as well. So if you are in a crowded bus, crowded train, restaurant, etc., there is the direct spray that may infect you. There is the aerosol spread that may also infect you. Therefore, a mask uh, is essential health protection device. It's not like ifs and buts. It will save your life. Um, wear it and insists that others wear it too. Baroness Greengrass, what, what, what do you think should happen then? If we get this news next week that we're going to have to revert to a, a more rigid lockdown again, I mean, what, what is the message that you would give to the government? What is the message you would give to those vulnerable people? At best, that could be two or three million. At worst, it could be 15 million. I would say be in touch with the people you know and love who you can see personally try and get as much technology to older people as possible so that they can those who can't get together can be together on zoom or whatever but if you want to see people i know one 96 year old who had a drink every evening over the garden fence with three or four neighbors that's fine as long as you keep your distance and as the doctor has just said wear a mask and we want people to have a life we don't want their lives to end because of this virus um because why would they bother if you know they'll just die mm. so why not have the remainder of your life as pleasant as we possibly can make it but insist on keeping the rules we haven't insisted we haven't fined people who don't maybe we should be a bit stricter but allow people the freedom to have a life especially those elderly people who don't know if they're going to be around next year we can't deprive them of any quality of life it's just stupid so have a life but obey the rules and make the rules very difficult to break Baroness Sally Greengross, thank you. Former Director of Age Concern. The other voice you heard there was Dr. Bharat Pankani, both with us here on Talk Radio.